Hi, welcome back to another hour with Crowder with me, your host Crowder. Like, share, subscribe, and comment. If you're already a subscriber, go ahead and ding the bell so that you can get all of my latest podcast interviews. Today we have another good ass guest, Thomas Kelly. Hey, how you doing? This is Thomas Kelly the third. Hey, you're the third. That's so crazy. I know. To right? just go down the line like that. Oh, it was crazy growing up. So who do, how do you do that? It's well, like Thomas Kelly well, it's Thomas, Senior. Well, yeah, Thomas Kelly Senior. That was my grandfather. Yeah. And Thomas Kelly Jr. That's my father. And now it's me. There won't be a fourth though. <laughs> it won't? No. Oh, thank God. No. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. But you never making know. Making too much of that damn real estate money, man. Uh, yeah, but still, <laughs> four is too many. Yeah. But, you know, it depends. I have a daughter, though, but... Is that why you opted out? You're like, oh, I got a kid now. I'm not trying to do this. For the most thing. part, yeah. Yeah, I feel bills you. get high. <laughs> I'm not even going to lie to you. Especially feel... when you have a daughter. Yeah. Girls... Oh. Boys are bad, like... But girls are, like, expensive. So you got to pick the two of the... Uh, pick your poison. You either want somebody bad or you want somebody expensive. Well, true. And with girls, it's just totally different costs. Because they got to get that. I, I actually take my little daughter to get pedicures and manicures yep. and things like that so I can have a conversation with her throughout the process, talk about her week. That's a good time for us to have daughter-daddy time and just to talk. But then again, when she goes shopping, she has to get the accessories. Boys don't really do all that or need that. They just want some nice kicks, jeans, shirt. They good. Not a girl. Even when it comes to the toys. Like, you can get a boy a truck, you can get a boy a football. That yeah. thing doesn't come with accessories. No, But no. you get that damn dollhouse. You got to get, get Ken. Yeah. You got to get the couch. Yeah. The car. Yes. And the list goes on. Yeah. And then clothes for all of them. No, she's wearing the same thing. Right, right, right. <laughs> she wearing the same thing, man. Absolutely. Nah. And now since we're talking about it, it's coming up to Christmas time. Now you're making me feel bad. Because I got to look at my banking account because I know it's going to be kind of expensive. Man, you better go <laughs> ahead and put that house on layaway. Oh, no. We need to get those sold right now. But w <laughs> since we're di diving into the whole house, the dollhouse theme, okay. we want to talk about some real houses now. All right, and let's we want to talk about the real estate Go ahead. Business. Go ahead. Because of the COVID, what, ha what have you seen is going on as far as... The whole COVID thing, um, how's real estate looking right now? Well, based on my opinion, it has definitely changed how we actually conduct business in the real estate game. As far as the old way of meeting and having open houses, now we're doing more virtual and we're actually using technology to push our product mm -hmm. online. So a lot of people that's not IT savvy, some of them, some of those agents have some issues because they don't know how to do streaming videos or, or market themselves online. Um, and then also now you are able to put your listings out and actually put it out for various types of people, the millennials, depending on what age bracket you age, you actually able to reach a broader audience. Yeah, so it forces you. <laughs> yeah, it seems like it has some good and bad things. Right. Like it does. you said, for the people that have done it that old school foot to right. the pavement, you right. know, communication with people, Correct. they're a people person. That's how they make their money. Right. They got the house like that. Right. But then you get some people that is tech savvy and now the tables have turned. Correct. And now I don't have to meet with you. I can give you a virtual tour. You can go in the house yourself mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. that's that. My thing is with that is I feel like the COVID thing has weaned out. It's like natural selection. It's weaning out the the old school for the new school. Correct. Now keep in mind, I told we totally agree with that aspect, but you're still gonna have to have that personal communication and being able to communicate with with whatever people that come through the door, your clients, etc. But you have to look outside the box to be able to be successful in real estate right now. You can't keep doing the same old thing. You're going to have to change how you conduct business by employing or either hiring somebody to do the social media part of it if you're not familiar with it. Because you're going to have to have those skills to move forward and still keep those old skills sharp as well. You say that you're, that you're, you're going to still need that, but that's just right now. Right. Five, ten years now in line. 
I don't think so. Well, I agree with you. But right now, you're still going to have those. You still need those tools and be able to communicate. Yeah. Um, well, we're talking about five, ten years down yes. the line. That's where I'm looking towards. Because mm -hmm. the one thing that I've noticed about Go ahead. COVID is that it really either made or break companies, especially with Correct. the fast food industry. Mm -hmm. The fast food industry was the one that woke a lot of people up because mm -hmm. it was big corporations shutting down. Correct. I think um, Peppa, um, Pizza Hut was one of them that's like, oh, you know, we kind of going bankrupt. Why? Because a lot of interaction is done between you making that pizza and then you're putting it in your car and driving it to my house. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they was talking about they was going bankrupt. I don't know if it was true or not. You know, you guys have to look it up. But I seen an article on it and I was like, wow, that's a big corporation that's been around for years. And then the mom and pop companies, they just didn't have a chance at all. Mm -hmm. And my first thing when I thought about the mom and pops, I was like, what they should do is get them a truck, leave the brick and mortar alone, nah. get a uh, get a food truck. They already have the clientele. If you was up and running and you had enough money to keep up and running, mm -hmm. now take that money, go get you a food truck, and just be mobile. Yeah, and it goes back to a conversation that I had with some other people that weren't realtors, but just entrepreneurs in general. For those savvy entrepreneurs, they're going to be very successful because they already looked at the old footprint. And they don't have to worry about brick and mortar, like you said, and they're able to actually move and be yeah. mobile. So they're doing extremely well right now. But like I was going, circling back, what I was saying is just having that mentality and being able to change. And you have to change with the time to be successful at anything at this point. So now with minimalist coming out, you know what a minimalist is, right? Go ahead, explain. Okay, Um, uh, what is a, a minimalist is... um. Someone that doesn't have a lot of stuff, they don't need a use for like a house and all mm -hmm. of that stuff. They condense their life down to the bare minimum okay. of things. So with the generation after us, I think maybe three generations from now, mm -hmm. everybody will be minimalist. How would a real estate agent be able to prepare themselves for that shift in the real estate business? If that shift happens, then you're still going to have to have somewhere to live. Regardless, yeah. No matter how big of a property it is, mm -hmm. small, or the dollar amount, you're still gonna have to have somewhere to live, and you're still gonna have to rely on an expert like myself and other realtors that's still in the game and keeping their skills sharp. Because what you don't want to do, and I use this as an example, yeah. is when you go to court. God forbid, not you. I'm just saying. Oh, no, I'm done with that lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done with that you, lifestyle. If you have to go through a legal process, would you represent yourself or are you going to hire somebody? I'm going to hire somebody. Same thing with real estate. It's fine that you want to search online for realtor, using Realtor and Zillow, and that's fine. But you still want to have somebody that's an expert to be able to guide you through the process. And I'll give you an example, and this is why I'm putting it out there. I have a current client right now, awesome client. Um, but yes, they're using Realtor, Zillow, and all the other online for a condo. But people don't know when you search for a condo, and if you have an FHA loan, that community is probably, you probably won't be able to get it because you have an FHA loan. Those are an example of something that you're not going to know unless you're an expert or you a realtor because you can call, depending on your loan, for that using that example, you won't get that house because FHA is not going to approve that loan to go through for property that's not FHA approved, and that's condos. Yeah, I see that. So you that. have to be very particular and know the details on those properties. Yeah, I see where you're going with that. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that's a really good example of that. But I still think that that's still looking into this this year of like us right now. Okay. And I'm looking into like five, the, 10 years. Yeah, the, the future. Road. What is it? What is a job for real estate? Because now the example I would use is my um, phone. Okay. The, remember when the <laughs> operator, you know, you call, I remember my mom's job. Mm -hmm. I used to call my mom's job and 
um, the operator would pick up <laughs> and she'd say, um, hi, this is Texas Worker Compensation Commission. How may I help you? Hey, I'm looking for, you know, Linda, you know, whatever. Okay. okay. And then it's dun, 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 dun. Right, right. And then, okay, so now we don't have that anymore. Correct. That person is actually a computer yes. now or a recording or a robot. Yeah, which I have a problem with because for some reason I'm from Georgia <laughs> and they say, we don't understand <laughs> what you just said. Yeah, and then you like number three. Exactly. And by that time, I just want to throw the phone. Yeah, you just hang up the damn phone. Like, oh, yeah. You can't, you can't understand me. But yeah. I get what you're saying. Yeah, uh, those people are now robots now. Correct. And I think that that's going to happen with real estate. Real estate is going to be Carvana. You know okay. what Carvana is? How did they just... With yeah. the little cars, I think that's how it's going to be with houses. Okay, you just go in and you say, "I want, I need a two bedroom, mm -hmm. um, three and a half bath, and a two door garage." Okay, mm, come down. They put it on an eighteen wheeler. Correct. That computer eighteen wheeler truck <laughs> takes it to your land. Right, Boom. right, right. And I understand what you're saying, but there's different aspects of real estate too. The contracts. Yeah, you got to know the contract, um, and that's something that people don't pretty much have a feeling or the expertise to go along with contracts to I'll present. Cut the word jargon. Well, that is true. But when you start doing contracts, it's only one time and once you sign that paperwork. <laughs> one time. Go, it's fine. Meaning, I'm sorry. Well, okay. Say, for instance, when you go on the contract yeah. and you put in your do's and don'ts and what you want, once you go through closing and everything is finalized, that's pretty much it. It's final. So if you start leaving out details here and there and trying to circle back, you're going to have some issues there. So you still want a realtor to represent you because still I understand about just the showing part. But the other part is the aspects of the contract that we we have to use using Trek because we have different contracts and that's pretty much universal unless you're doing new construction, new bills, the builder 90% of the time is going to have their own contract. But if you're not familiar with writing contracts and looking at contracts, you don't know what to look for. What are some of those things that you would look for? As far as now, are we talking existing or are we talking about new construction? New construction. New Cause const that, I think everybody wants to do when they buy a house, mm -hmm. they want to, Put add something on, especially if they have kids or something. They have Correct. more kids than they plan yes. to. And now I'm certified for new construction. And here's the deal. I, me personally, if I have, for an example, if I have $100 to buy an existing and $100 to buy a brand new, I'm going to go with the brand new. For sure. A exactly. So that's why I got certified in new construction. Now, here's the thing. What you're saying, and maybe if I'm, I don't want to overstep, but what you're saying is you want to basically add some some additional features to the home. Yeah. And I see that smile. That's what I'm into, yeah, adding. Yeah. Now, by you saying that, you got to realize once you start in that contract and you start adding on to that house, say for instance, dollar amount, let's just say 100 because that's easy. You start adding 20, 30. Then you're up to 150 or whatever that price may be. But when you get that, when you're going through the process of getting that loan, yeah. the bank is going to send an appraisal out. That house may not appraise. So mm. if, if you only have $100 that you can spend that your lender has said, look, you've been approved for $100, just a dollar amount, and you start adding on 50000 you're going to have to come out with 50000 Oh. Because it may not get approved. Okay. So, so you got to be really careful with doing the upgrades. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Just an example, because I am getting a little mixed up. Just an example of add-ons. Okay. So I buy in a house that mm -hmm. is existing. With oh, are you saying new construction from the ground up? Or are you talking about an existing and then doing upgrades? Yeah, an existing and okay. then doing an the upgrade. Like I came two bath, two ha um bedroom, two okay. bath. I want another bath. You can do that, but still, before you start doing your add-ons on an existing, you still want to make sure those add-ons are you okay with resale value. 
if you resell it and the comps come back lower, you might take a hit. You follow me? Because yeah. really, you doing that add-on for your convenience. But Joe down the street may have the same, and his house may be appraised at 100 but you just put 150 in it, but the market may not support your add-on, so you may lose money. Oh, all that stuff makes my head hurt. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. Even in five to ten years, we might still need you guys. <laughs> I was convinced that, oh, no, nah, because nobody ain't reading contracts, but I right. guess, yeah, you should read your contract, but I wouldn't know anything of that because I'm another person that don't really be reading contracts like right, that. Right, right, right. I'd rather just pay someone to. Correct. But then even with that, like, what is some, if, okay, my thing with people Go that read contracts is that we all know what we're hiring you for to right. read a contract. And if something in that contract benefits you, are you going to tell me about it? What are some of those hidden gems in contracts that you guys benefit from? Uh, and Okay. Now, first off, in real estate, you have what we call a disclosure. So, uh, Say, for instance, you you selling your property. Yeah. You have to disclose what's wrong with it um, and let that be known. Now, unfortunately, everybody is not as upfront as the next guy. So that's why you make sure that you get a home inspection. Okay? So you can start seeing what is really wrong behind the closed doors because they may not have disclosed it properly or may not want to disclose it at all. So that's why you get a good home inspector to inspect the property prior to. And under the contract, back to what I was saying, you have an option phase. So you can walk away at a certain period of time throughout the phase of purchasing your property. How true is that? Th those appraisal people. How yeah, true are those? Yeah. We all care I, about I, the scam. I, I, I get it. I get it. <laughs> it's a first off. This is my opinion, <laughs> <laughs> but I only do business with people that I cultivate relationships with. Yeah, that I have a personal relationship, not a personal relationship, but a a, a good business relationship. Because when I refer out and say, you know what, this home inspector is a, a good inspector. I'm not going to tell you to use somebody that I don't feel comfortable or haven't done business with. But I get what you're saying. And it's just, you you just have to have a good realtor to have good business relationships with people that he's going to refer or she refer you to. You know, I, I can tell you how I conduct my business, but the next guy down the street may not feel the need to have a re good relationship he might just get a phone a business card and say hey just call this guy and haven't done any business with that particular person he or she yeah have you came across any of those of, of those people that do do faulty claims like for the appraisal they go to okay. a house and you know that house ain't worth no damn five hundred dollars but they say it is and then mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, they pocket the extra money. Well, throughout the process, I do um, a CMA, um, a comparative market analysis, prior to. So I okay. kind of know. In the ballpark of what it is. Exactly. Mm. But fortunately, I haven't come across um, home inspectors that are not on the up and up. Yeah, I don't think that but you But I'm not saying that, that it's not going to happen. And I'm not saying that they're not out there, but for me personally, I haven't had any issues at this point because I do a CMA and I look at it, even though if I look at property, I'm I'm going to look and see what the value is so I can be somewhat in the ballpark. Do you really feel like um, realtors are the middleman between the owner of the house and the owner of the house? Um, they have to disclose that if you're saying, do they have a personal relationship with the person or a business relationship? No, like as far as just business goes, realtors being basically the middleman, like why can't the owner of the house and the person they, that wants to own the house just do business? Well, for, if you own your house, you can put your house on the market. Yeah. Do people that 
own their house, put their house on the market, and yeah, those are sales by those are sales by owners. But here's the thing: sales by owners um, normally they don't sell their property; um, they just rent it. Well, they'll sell it, but they have a hard time actually selling their property mm -hmm. because you own the property and you say, "Okay, I don't put X Y Z in this in this house." And I don't put back to what we were talking about doing all these upgrades and I want 300,000, but the market in that neighborhood is not 300,000. It may be 150. So Ooh. how are you going to unload that property? <laughs> you can't, you got to just meet in the middle with 175. And then on top of that, how are you going to market that property? You know, are you going to be able to put it in MLS? Because you, you got to be licensed and, and things of that nature to be able to market it appropriately. And do you know a lot of a lot of people outside of a realtor that want to buy it, buy your property? So when you have a realtor, what you what you're going to have, especially from me, you're going to have resources to have, to be able to list your property and get it sold at, at a reasonable time frame, because what you don't want to do is let it sit on the market. For Why? a long period of time. I never understood that just sitting on the market. You don't want sit, you to have to sit on the market. Because if you sit on the market, it can devalue your home and make it harder. Because people that are looking at your house saying, oh, it's been on the market for 200 days. But the price ain't dropped. So if it's been on the market that long, whoever's going to purchase that property is going to lowball your offer. <sighs> So, <laughs> and if you're trying to get 300 and it's done been on the market already sitting, why I'm going to give you full market price if I know it's been on the market for that long? They start to think that you're desperate because uh, it's been on the market so long. It's been on the market long, so there's something wrong. Yeah, it's kind of they, like. They're going to say think there is either two things. They're going to say, oh, there's got to be something wrong with that house. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm not going to offer you 300. I'm going to offer you 275. Not even 275. I've tried two. Hey, but you get uh -huh. where I'm, you yeah, get where I'm, you get where I'm coming from. So Yeah, it's kind of like the old Mustang that's been sitting in the backyard mm -hmm. and you've been trying to sell it for 2500 mm -hmm. because of all the things you've put into it and it's really worth 800 cuz it just still runs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like when people put pools in the back of their house. I heard that's a real big no-no. You can put a pool, you can put a $50,000 pool in the back, but when you sell that house, you're not going to get $50,000 worth of money to replace the money that you put in that pool. That's the thing that I had to come to grips with, <laughs> with the right. with the putting money into something and then wanting the money that you put into it to back. It back. It, it doesn't work it, it, like that. No. And I made that <laughs> analogy with the old Mustang because I do have a two... 2005 Mustang in the mm -hmm. bag that I put about $2,500 into. I bought it for a thousand. I thought I was going to fix it up, fixed it up. But then I was like, oh, forget this. I'm just going to buy me a car. So right. I went out, got me a car, car note, whatever. And I'm still like, okay, well, I'm going to sell this for uh, 2000 And my brother's like laughing because he knows like you're not selling that for 2000 What happened? Did you sell it for 2000 No, it's still sitting in the back. <laughs> it's still sitting on the market. <laughs> and I am thinking about selling him up for like 800 now. It, it, yeah. And then you got to keep in mind, the longer you don't sell it, you got to pay that note. Well, it's, it's a bought car. Well, I'm saying if that was a house. Oh, if it's a house. Oh. Yeah. What note? If you own the house. Wait a minute. If you own the house. But if you own the house, there's a difference between the conversation of own the house. You still can own the house and still have a note. But What's if you note? own like a bank, the bank still own the house because you haven't paid off the, the mortgage. You don't really own the house outright until you actually paid all your payments. Wait a minute. You can sell a house. But you can still sell it. You can sell a house without paying the mortgage off? No, 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 no. What I was saying is there's a difference between ownership. People have a concept when they buy the house that they actually own the house. You own. You don't necessarily own the house until you get the deed. Like for a car, for example. You buy a car. You own that car, but you still have a note until you pay the note off. Oh, okay. So then you, you get the title. 
Okay. And, and now you outright. You good. Okay, so you okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I was going way around because I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> this is another little loophole that he's talking about. No, no. You don't and, and to put it this put it very vague and simple. Until you have that paperwork that you have ownership, like the title, you you, you own it, but you still got a note. Until you pay that note off and get that paper. <laughs> yeah. You know, for example, like uh, church. I go to church sometimes and the past say, oh, we just paid our mortgage off. They happy. <laughs> and you as a realtor is like, no, you didn't. <laughs> no, you didn't. You know, but it's, it's you know, it, it, that goes back to you just want to make sure that you, if you're going to try to put your market on, you know, you probably going to need somebody with some, some, um, expertise to yeah, be able to help in a you. nutshell and it's okay to reach out um and ask but at the end of the day what do you think you trying what are you trying to accomplish you trying to actually sell it move on and do something else so why not right um i was watching this video on facebook um it was about these people building houses, like the material used to build the houses, mm -hmm. how it's really cheap material, like kind of like that material where you could just be like, ah, like the right, right, right. karate kid type of board. Mm -hmm. And I came across the fact that, okay, you're, I'm trying to put this in a way that I can explain it. Okay. So the house is built. It probably, with that material that they had, it looked like that house was built for like $100,000. Mm -hmm. But then you go, and because it's in a nice neighborhood, and it looks nice because we as civilians and people that's not in real estate and marketing or construction, we don't know cheap material from good material. We just know that this house looked nice. Right. And so I just want to know how much direct like contact do y'all have with the construction companies on how this house was built and the materials that it was built because okay. y'all kind of got to have know something to know to well, go and be the realtor of the house go show it and stuff well yeah yes and no we stay in our lane um as far as realtors being home inspectors and things of that nature you have to know who you can do business with and trust because I'm not an expert on certain areas in real estate because what you're asking is more of a home inspection type deal. And that's why I cultivate relationships with good home inspectors. And they'll be able to identify and look at those areas and look at the material because they have more knowledge and more experience than I. Because if you're my client, I'm not going to let you, let you uh, not know. Yeah. Because I'm going to protect your interests. That's how I build business and keep my business flowing based on being able to communicate, based on establishing good relationships with other people within real estate, good home inspections, warranty, those type people that I gravitate towards and I keep in my tool belt. And what, what you were saying is correct. Now, if you build in the house from from this from ground level, from foundation, you can do an inspection, having it do it in phases. So when they pour, start pouring the uh, foundation or doing the foundation or whatever the case may be, that home inspector is going to be there through all those phases. So he can have a checkbox each time these different phases are going up. So those things, what you're talking about, will be caught and addressed. Oh. Because I'm trying to figure out how much, how what is the, what is the um, relationship that you and contractors have? None at all. Well, I don't necessarily have. I have relationships with contractors, but that's not my expect. I don't. Yeah. I don't build houses. I sell houses, and that's pretty much in my lane. Anything so, outside of my lane, I make sure that I have somebody in my in my camp yeah. to have the expertise to be able to answer and address questions outside of what I know. 
So whenever you go in and I'm sorry for interrupting. Go ahead. Go um, ahead. So whenever you go in and you're like, oh, well, this is just say you're selling an older house. This is 1901 Victorian, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. this carving. Y'all don't know mm -hmm. those details about the house? We do in some cases. We also look at title. We, we, we look at the deed. We look at the transaction from the previous owners. So we can know, okay, in that room, it used to be a, a, a bathroom. Now it's a, a tool shed or a closet or whatever that may be because you have to get different approvals from whatever county, city, and, and, and so forth to be able to go out and get, get those inspections done throughout the phases of those add-ons. So, so there'll be a record, a track record of what's going on with that house. So I look up all of that. So like a Carfax. So basically, yes. yeah, like a house fax. So you don't get a lemon. Yeah, basically, <laughs> because I'm glad you said that because right. basically that's what this guy was talking about in this, um, I wish I could pull it up or find it or whatever. I understand. But it's saved somewhere deep in my right, archives. Right. But he was literally saying that, hey, you know, you guys are going out and buying these Five hundred thousand, six hundred dollars home, and it literally takes us maybe a hundred thousand to build this. Right. So I'm trying to figure out what is the realtor's part in this transaction from they build it to okay, we got a house for sale to we find a company to we get not you but just a realtor to sell this to us to it going in the hands of the owner and then a big you know like the littlest storm comes by and sweeps this house away because it's mm -hmm. all made of cheap mm -hmm. material. And I want to know how many people down the line knew that this mater this material was cheap and it wasn't going to withstand. You have to be able to find a, 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 a good realtor that's going to look at the history of the property. Okay. Now, as far as the profit margin and all that, now I'm going to be honest and I'm going to be straightforward with you. I used to own a funeral home. Okay. And, and I was a mortician. So, and I'll use this as an example. Um, people say, okay, I just pay, let's just say $5,000 on a funeral. Yeah, but that $5,000 is not profit. You still, out of that $5,000, you have a lot of overhead to be able to take care of your employees, those funeral cars, et cetera, et cetera. So even though that house, not saying, well, with numbers, it could fluctuate or whatever it may be, but let's just say you you said 500,000. 500,000 is not really the total cost because you still have your labor. You still have to buy land. Then you have to get all your your uh tools and and your workers and they have to have insurance also. So when you're looking at that, they're doing that to offset costs to make a profit for themselves too. Because even though they're selling it 500, that's not all profit. That margin may be 25% of that of profit. So it just depends on how that goes. Now, as far as the material and all of that, that comes into play with getting a good home inspection, if that so makes just, any sense. Yeah, it because just turns everybody's back. trying to make a living one way or another. Now, say for instance, if it costs, for example, a pen, this pen here, this pen costs a dollar, but that's not profit. How much truly out of that dollar is a profit? It's a, maybe a small percent. No, like probably 10 cents. Yeah. So you got to look at it from that aspect too, because if that's the case, you know, there probably won't be a lot of stuff. There probably won't be a lot of cars. People can't make any money because you're in business. You got to make money. But how you make your money, you know, that's that's a little different. I'm not going to overcharge people. Yeah. I don't do that. You know, you, you, you got good people and bad people in all type businesses. So it's unfortunate we have to have bad biz, business people in all areas, even in my area, even in the funeral business, even in the car business, which car business, they, they get a lot of slack because you use car dealers. 
you know, they, those, they ain't fake. Yeah, <laughs> those, bro. <laughs> no, because I'm about to get on this topic because okay. those guys were sitting up there. Remember when that flood happened in Houston? Yes. They was taking all those damn cars, bringing them here, and like, you know, drying them out and just getting them to the point where they just started again and selling them. Well, I. I, I you like, well, I, I don't know anything about that. That's not my expertise. <laughs> <laughs> I would say this. I mean, that goes back to what I was saying before. You have people in business that do a lot of shady things. That's unfortunate. I mean, it is what it is when it comes to that. But you have to do your due diligence on your end and do the research and not take whoever's selling you something, word for it. You got to look and make sure that you have actual facts to make an intelligent decision whether or not you want to go with it or not. So how have you built up your team to be honest and be transparent mm -hmm. um, with funeral business and now this with those two, it's all about people skills and being able to be truthful and honest. I tell you, I'm not going to sell you a house that I wouldn't live in. Okay. Bottom line, you have to be human and not look at profit all the time. I got to eat. Don't take it the wrong way. But at the same time, I'm not going to get over, try to get over on you because yeah. that's not how I biz, bi build business. It's through referrals. If I get a bunch of bad referrals, I won't eat. And I also learned in business, every dollar is not a good dollar. <laughs> you know? When, when did you... um? What is one instance that you got a bad dollar? I didn't get a bad dollar, but I would have. And I'll give you a prime example. And I, I can't really indulge with, you know, who the person I'm not going to Yeah, say no name, name, no businesses, please. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that I've had a, a client and they were approved for a dollar amount, which let's just say over 200 I don't want to give the dollar amount because it is what it is. Yeah. Um, and you've been pre-approved. They come to me. They didn't know if they got the credit score up um, through my resources and pre-approved with a lender that I do conduct business with because I have several, not a lot, under five because mm -hmm. I don't do more than five. That's just too much. Yeah. Um. And had the opportunity to purchase a home and decided I want to live in an area, I'm not going to call it area, but an area that's 300000 up and expected me to be able to negotiate $50,000 because their approval letter, for example, is two hundred. dollars I don't do that. I'm not going to go in and lowball a person fifty thousand dollars that is not that's not me you need a miracle worker i'm not him you know and i'm like i said i'm straight up when it comes to that you're not gonna put myself out there to negotiate an unreasonable amount of money because at the end of the day once you leave and i get you a home i have to may have to deal with this person again and be like oh mr kelly oh i Mr. Kelly call, hang up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I'm not going to do that. Yeah. You know, it has to be uh, going to work and benefit for both of us. Even with clients that I even feel that you're going to actually try to low, want me to lowball every property. I'm just not going to do it because at the end of the day, you got to be a realistic and right at right now is more of a, a seller's market. Sellers are not going to be getting low. There's multiple offers out there. And um, also there's an issue with um, in Collin County where you have people on a waiting list for a half a million dollar homes. Yes. Why? How is that when we're in a pandemic and everybody doesn't have a job? Because when you say everybody don't have a job. 
we talking about the whole U.S. Say, for instance, California. We have a lot of people that's gravitating here, that's moving here. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of people from New York. You have a lot of people up north moving down here because there's no state tax. And cities with, and states with no, well, states with no state tax, you know, that's huge for some people, um, benefits. So when things happen and arise for as a market, Texas is a pretty good state to live in. No, no state tax. Um, as far as the homes, now I say half a million, but you can buy a decent home for less than 200, um, and those same home, you go to California, you spending a lot of money. So what happens is, for example, in California, they sell that property, take take the profit off of it of maybe a hundred, two hundred. They come to Texas and get the same same well a bigger home, and they got cash in their pocket to put down a huge payment, a huge down payment for those homes. So even though we're looking at like, oh, wow, that's a half million dollars. But some of these people come in profiting from their last trans transaction up north and come down and be like, oh, I can get all this for X. Because that half a million dollars in California, I can assure you, <laughs> yeah, we, I just had the the dude that just walked out of here. He's from California. We were just talking about that. Okay, how like um the, the cost of living down yeah, there. Yeah, you need is to give so him my crazy. business card in case he wanted how. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just like oh, okay. it's just so I, crazy down there. Yeah, and it's better down here. It's for living purposes. Correct, because so what, I guess what you were saying is that like mm -hmm. right now down south is a good spot well texas in general you were saying because yes. we don't have cell tax and then you have people coming from these you know other states as far as new york and california correct where it's like a high cost of living yes and they're coming down here and figuring out that we don't have state tax mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's super cheap you can buy a shack out there for what you can buy here a mansion exactly so you gotta you gotta look at it from that standpoint too and then also um, right now, I have a client, um, her mother, um, which I'm help selling. It's under con well, not under contract yet, but I don't think it's going to be on the market that long. She's a she's Florida resident, older lady, and um, she's selling her property and she's moving to Dallas to live with her 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 daughter. Um, she's had that home for I don't know how long, but it's almost paid off. Once we sell that property, she's going to have a lot of money in her back pocket to look for another home or whatever, whatever they decide to do. I also do that as well. I, I also, out of, out of most of the states, I do a lot of referral because I do a lot of business with um, out of state. I'm from Georgia, so I do a, a, a transactions in Georgia. I just sold a property in Georgia as well. And what I do, I don't have license, but what I do is make sure that I fit you with a good realtor that have the same standards I have. And I also check up on them as well. So even if you're in another state, you can give me a call and I can either help you locate a property or list your property. And I still in the mix because I want to make sure the communication flows and make sure whoever I refer you with that you are happy with the person that I put you partner with to be able to do the transaction, real estate transaction, because that affects me. Cause I don't want, I, I don't like, I don't like issues. <laughs> so it's more of like, I'd rather treat you good all the time than treat you good once. Kind of, kind of yes. like the run, kind of like, I don't yes. want to put it like this, but mm -hmm. like, um, mm -hmm. like a drug dealer, kind of like, well, I got a better scenario than that, but I'll use the funeral home business. Yeah. Okay. And, Say, for instance, you have a big family, all right? You may, you, you, someone died in the family. They come to my, well, I used to have it. I sold it four years ago here in Dallas. It was in North Dallas, but that's a different conversation. This is real estate. Yeah. Um, but I'm just using that as an example. You may now have a lot of money, but I'll work with you, and I'm going to treat you fair because I know if I treat you fair and honest, and do a profession, have a professional service and, and 
and communication is awesome and you are you you're happy that you was able to give me a call and I took care of those services what you going to do you going to tell the rest of your family Mr. Kelly did a good job that's how you get business you don't do you don't think of it as well I just service this family on to the next no you build a relationship because then if somebody else outside in your family the chances are they're going to give you a call because you did an awesome, incredible job for that family. Right. So the future of homes, do, are you familiar with tiny homes? I'm familiar with tiny homes. I'm familiar, but I'm not an expert on them. No. But go ahead, ask your question. Um, I think that's where the future is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Tiny homes. Okay. I don't think that the future is in like the traditional brick we're sitting here. I mm -hmm. think the new generation, like you said, they're still going to need a place to stay regardless. Right. Whether you become a minimalist or you're into tiny homes, which is mm -hmm. a minimal aspect, you know, it's very tiny, It but it has this roomy and it has all your, you know, basic necessities, you know, Correct. stuff like that. So I think that's where the future is right there. Tiny home. And I actually talked to this one dude because I was actually looking into one of those, mm -hmm. a tiny home. You can hitch it up to your wife name and yeah. just ride away. Yeah. I mean, there are some benefits. Um, How do you feel about tiny homes? Well, to be honest with you, it doesn't really matter for me. If that's what you want, we're going to get it or look into it. But me personally, I, I I wouldn't do it personally because I have a daughter and I, she needs a yard. She needs, you know, things of that nature. It doesn't fit my lifestyle as far as your lifestyle. Yeah. You know, so I, I don't bad mouth oh. it. It's just based on my my lifestyle yep oh okay um what about the container homes those are some bad i like container homes i think that those the mugs are they nice mm -hmm. have you seen them no i have not oh man tell me about it yeah i'm gonna have to no nah, i'm gonna have to look it up for you get you get you one right here <laughs> no nah, they're really nice they're really nice i really hate doing stuff on camera because the people can't see it but Go ahead. Container homes. Oh my God. It's made with those trailers. Container homes. They're made with like trailers. Okay. Um, that the trailers in the back that the truckers haul, and you know that they come from off the port. Oh, I, I see where you're going with that. Yeah. Meaning uh when they are shipping freight. Yes. And they gut them. Well, it's and not really gut any gutting them out. Gut but... Them, but customize them. Yes. And those. add more living space. Like Legos. Yes. <laughs> That's the concept I'm looking at and visualizing based on what you just said. Yes. What do you feel? I'm trying to find you one. Okay. Here's okay. one that I was looking at. And... Okay. Sorry, folks. You're not going to be able to see that. Actually, that's pretty cool. Yes. I kind of like that, look, I see Sean over there not bobbing his head. Yeah, I'm okay. Yes, okay. they yeah. are nice. But the only thing is, I think it's like 1100 for a container. And and then, of okay. course, we just went over the building something from the ground up. Yeah. So you putting in labor, you're putting in cost. Mm -hmm. How do you think that that will affect once? Because this is a new thing, but mm -hmm. I really feel like it's going to catch on. Container homes. I think, first of all, I'm a person that don't always stay in the box. I like to listen to other things uh, outside the box, like you bringing this information to me. Um, and I I wouldn't, I wouldn't say no to it. <laughs> You're like, I wouldn't say no, but I'm not living there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that much about it to to actually make a, a decision right now, but I definitely like the look. I like the concept, um, but I would definitely look at more of the resale value. I'm a dollar cent guy. <laughs> oh, so you're thinking more of the future with that. Like, how's these going to do because in the you, future? Because if you sell it, how many other people are going to have the same concept as you? Right. And are they going to have the same um, likelihood of falling in love with the concept? Because when you take the population as a pie, you still have, you're going to split it. So how many people in that, in that one little area are going to have the same concept you have for resale value? I mean, those things I look at, but as far as if I want an extra house somewhere, like on the lake, oh yeah, we can do that all day. <laughs> 
that's <laughs> bomb. They're bomb. I really love them. Like I'm yeah. not. I'm looking less into the traditional right. house because I just don't want to. But mm-hmm. yeah, container homes. I think that's where the future is for real estate. If you now guys I do wanna... a container store on the lake. I'll do that. Mm-hmm. I, I've opened up my eyes to anything on the lake. Man, you can do that. But as long now. as they don't have no snakes, though. Man, you could do that nah. now. I think that's where the future is. Okay, tiny, okay. tiny homes, container homes. That's where the future is for you guys. Okay. Not the traditional brick and mortar. That's over with. This could this generation isn't thinking about homes because they're not thinking about kids because the economy is so bad and they have to work, well, work, now, work, work, now, work. Now, I disagree on that now. Really? I'm I'm gonna be honest now. I listen, but if I don't totally agree, I'm gonna tell you. Yeah, let's now, hear it. Now, let me tell you something now. With the COVID, there's two things going to happen. <laughs> i tell you. You ready? You ready? I'm ready. Okay. Two. One. Either the divorce rate, the divorce rate going to go up. Because, I mean, you in a house, you in limited space with somebody you already don't like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> two. If you like them very much, or, well, very much would be bad. I would say if you ecstatic and love them all, oh, everything. You gonna have some babies. This is gonna be another baby boom. <laughs> yeah. So you're like, and both of those are good for my industry. <laughs> Absolutely. Because <laughs> if you because you're getting divorced, you're gonna need a house, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you do apartments? I do apartments occasionally. Yes, I do. Where do you feel like it's better? You guess selling an apartment or selling a house? Well, I think there's a third option that we haven't discussed. Which one? Home partners. Home partners. Ew, that sounds disgusting. Like, I yeah, only see, own a little bit of it. But <laughs> home partners and Divi. Now, the concept. Let me tell you about the concept. Yeah. Before you start giving me these brutal eyes. Yeah, I'm here. like, ew, that sounds like I don't own anything. Yeah, but you're doing the same thing with uh, an apartment. But with these particular programs, these two that I just mentioned, what they'll do is buy a house for you on your behalf. And then you have three years to get everything situated financial if if you need that, and then you can buy it back from them. Why are you living in that home? And the programs are slightly different from each other. Some Divi puts money outside of your, when you pay your rent, they put money in an account for, to help you with your down payment. Mm-hmm. Uh, with home partner, partners, I, I had a call, matter of fact, this week, well, a young lady, I can't think of her jogging my, her name, but anyway, somebody contacted me and want to know more. She has the program with home parties that's similar. They've been a little bit, they've been around a little bit longer than Diddy, and they are purchased. They have inventory as well. That when you actually locate the property and you qualify, you can stay in that home, and then you have three years or. I believe no more than, don't quote me, but no more than three years to get your finance correct. And then you can actually purchase. So that money that you're putting in for Divi and Home Partner, that might help you a little bit better going that avenue besides just renting an apartment. A lot of people don't really know that, um, but there's programs similar to apartments. And with apartments, if you looking at a two bedroom, I'm gonna tell you right now, some of those are close to a house. <laughs> <laughs> it is a house. Yeah, like twelve hundred bucks. Yeah, and and the thing of it is, uh, the more information that you have, you'll be able to make a better decision. Now, as far as the apartment, there's nothing wrong with living in an apartment, um, but explore other options as well. Before you just say, oh, I got to live in an apartment. You necessarily don't have to look and stay in your box. Yeah. There are some other options available that's out there, like the two programs I was just telling you, similar to rent uh, going to the apartment, but you're in a house and you have the option to purchase that home. So just keep that in mind as well. Then there's other programs out there that might be able to assist you for down payment. A uh, young lady that I'm working with right now, um, she's going through a process where, uh, like Garland and uh, some other areas, that they give up to seven thousand dollars for down payment assistance. So, just because you think that you can't buy a house, 
contact somebody to have the knowledge and give you options. Because this is one thing that I've noticed uh, people that may, you know, look like me. Um, it's all about the resources and have an open mind and have a conversation and start with dialogue, start a dialogue with somebody that's in that area yeah. that be able to, to be able to assist you and make sure you have the conversation with them prior to making a decision in an area that you're not an expert in or you don't don't have a lot of knowledge on. I think once you start cultivating relationships and talking to other people that you may lack certain skills or, or knowledge, don't think of it as you not, you're, you, you uneducated or anything like that. Everybody needs somebody. But you got to start by asking questions and asking people in different areas to be able to make a decision. Did you know, for example, did you know about a program like the Divi and the Home Partners that I was just discussing with you? No. See, I'm, most I've known is Hood. Exactly. But once you start having these conversations, then you can open up other options and other opportunities for you and your family. I feel that. Mm -hmm. I like that. And that's a very powerful note to go ahead and end on. Okay. We're going to go ahead and um, let me get all of your social media handles and anywhere that anyone can reach you at. Well, for one, my name is Thomas Kelly III. <laughs> I'm a realtor with Keller Williams Century, uh, Century 75. You, My contact information is my phone number is 214-448-7899. I'll repeat that again. My number is 214-448-7899. You can also send me an email, and my email address is Thomas Kelly, I, 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 because I'm the third, which we've talked about, at kw.com. And you can also reach me on Facebook. Just type in Thomas Kelly, I, 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 Realtor. It'll pop up. Okay. And you can also reach me at an hour Crowder, all streaming platforms, all social media handles, except Instagram and it's Crowder the Great, Crowder underscore the with an A dot E underscore the Great. And we're out.